In this example, we show the kinds of interpolation that we implemented for, for sampling from the grid. In our program, we implement a vector field for the speeds of the particles using a grid. If I press G with a mouse over one of the, the left areas, I can show the grid. Each grid has each vertex in the grid has a vector associated with it and that vector represents the speed of particle that's right on top of that vertex. That, that's a ve the speed that you should have. Now, most particles won't be over a vertex, but rather they'll be within a cell. So, in order to get their speed, we need to interpolate. Uh, we implemented bilinear interpolation and bicubic interpolation. Right now, we can see in the preview on the on the top right, uh, a group of particles following the wind field that I defined. In this wind field, I made um, the top section of the vectors pointing up and the bottom half pointing down. We can see that with bilinear interpolation, the the particles accelerate fairly fairly fast since it's only looking the 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 closest four uh, vectors and most likely it will be within a zone where all of the point vectors point the same direction. By pressing the E key I can toggle between bicubic and bilinear interpolation. So I will go ahead and change uh, to bicubic interpolation. Bicubic interpolation takes into consideration 16 vertices. Now we can't really see a big difference between bilinear and bicubic interpolation, even though more vertices are taken into account. We could argue that with bicubic interpolation, some of the points in the middle would would have more uh, vector speeds uh, canceling each other out, but we can see that it, it does not happen in a significant way. We can't really tell if there's a significant difference between bilinear and bicubic interpolation. So one of our conclusions is that the change, switching from one to the other one is not that significant.